Welcome. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I, uh, I'm excited to try this new avenue of delivering messages, and I hope this video finds you safe and well, and uh, your family as well is uh, safe, happy, and healthy. Um, I was racking my brain to put together a message that would, I feel, be very useful to all of you out there. And uh, based on my own experience in these trying times and uh, the world and the news and everything else, it's, I have this constant flooding of thoughts, you know, doubt and worry and uncertainty and concern. And, um, you know, I, like I share with most things, I, I typically go to the Bible to um, get some guidance to find out you know, what, what does God have in store for me as far as how do I, how do I change this in my life? And so, um, essentially what I'm going to speak about briefly is where in the Bible I've found the message to help me change my thinking. Uh, and so, our first scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it says, don't live any longer the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. And, you know, that scripture really speaks to me in that I have often felt like things weren't going the way they should. And this scripture helps remind me that my thinking is not necessarily my reality, and also that I am in God's hands. There is a plan in place, and to pause and try to see that plan uh, in the times when my doubt becomes overwhelming. Again, it is difficult times that we're all in with employment and health and restrictions and allowing God in to change our thinking is going to be one of the easiest ways for me to cope with this. And so more in how to, how is it possible to have our thinking changed? Because it's so automatic oftentimes. It's easy to have this belief that I know what's coming. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, I destroy every claim and every reason that keeps people from knowing God. God, I keep every thought under control in order to make it obey Christ. And what this speaks to me is if I pause in this moment of difficult time and difficult thinking, and I invite God in to help me change my thinking, that he will destroy those thoughts that I feel are leading me away. And so that takes us to our next scripture reading, which comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Do what you have learned or received or heard from me. Follow my example. The God who gives peace will be with you. Essentially what that's saying is, is even in those moments when my doubt becomes almost crippling and my fear takes full advantage of me, I need to look to the things that are good in my life. I need to look at the things that God has already provided and blessed me with. And in those things, I can see God at work. To have members of my family be healthy, to have the opportunity to continue to work and to help others are things that I believe are of him and that are going well. And so it's easy for me to sit around and look at the things that aren't or that haven't been. But what this tells us is that 
pausing and being grateful for what God has already blessed us with is the segue to changing our thinking. If the only thing on my mind is what I'm grateful for, then it doesn't allow that space for fear and doubt to enter. And so, like most things, how do we set in motion this kind of change? How is it that we change our thinking? And so I'm going to go to a very simple verse. It comes from Thessalonians. It is chapter 5, verse 17. And it reads, never stop praying. So in these times where my doubt impacts me, when my fear prevents me from being able to express love and gratitude, it tells me to never stop praying. And so what I've done is, is in those moments when I feel overwhelmed, that feeling of overwhelmed prompts me to pray. In those moments when I hear of others with difficult times, I don't think about how that's going to be me at some point. I think about it's another opportunity to pray for others. And reading the scripture and seeking the guidance is going to bring all of us through this in this difficult time. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in on whichever platform. I want to express to you that we will be staying together as much as possible during these times of distance. And youth group will continue to be on Thursday nights. Um, look out for a remind on that. And again, as always, feel free to contact me. Um, I am I'm always trying to make myself readily available to all of, all of you out there. And so I'd like to end briefly with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, right now we look to you for answers. We look to you for guidance. We look to you for courage. We look to you for peace. Lord, help our thoughts demonstrate what you have already blessed us with. Let us remain grateful and open to your will. Lord, help guide our hearts to you. Lord, help guide our thoughts to you and to others. And Lord, we welcome you in. We welcome you into our minds and our hearts when our doubt becomes overwhelming. And Lord, we thank you in advance for being present and with us through this challenging time. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.